Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, um, let me see who was here first. Uh, Carol, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you being here first. And um, happy Saturday or Sunday morning to you, whichever is left. Uh, or should I say whichever applies. Uh, CK, thank you for being here. And Lady Metatron's, Carol Lunn, uh, Lady Bird, Leslie F., Sharon Augustine, Lorna Williams, Emerald Derrick, and a host of friends and others. Oh, got us a milestone here, do we? Caroline, 24 months membership. Well, thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Two years, yeah, two years, 24 months. Two years barren of fun podcast. Thank you. You are quite welcome. And thank you so much for supporting Royal Sussex. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move on and go all the way to the end here. Kim Peaches, thank you so much for being here. Lambert Charles, Robin Hyde, Cherry Hill, Novi D, Deborah Robinson. Mmm. Delicious coffee. Uh, let's see. Cassie Banks. Church Nelly. Joan Garcia. Thank you. Okay. I promise you we're going to be here at least two hours. So buckle up your seat belts because, <clears throat> well, we got a lot to cover. But, yeah, it seems like they're down to just two working full-time Royals right now. Did I put that right? Royal family down to two full time royals. Yeah, uh, looks weird, but okay. Um, but yeah, so that seems to be where we are because there was some news today, <laughs> which should not surprise anybody. Uh, but first, a little order of business. Uh, there is a greeting card on the community tab. You know, where at the top it says community. Well, anyway, if you all can please uh, leave a kind word, a message there, thoughts, prayers, encouragement for um, our beloved sister Ivy, who has suffered a loss in her family. Uh, her brother passed away. And um, if you want to do more, you can always go over to her channel and um, maybe start a membership or maybe make some other kind of contribution, but you could always go over to her channel. Um, but if nothing else, please go over and subscribe. Um, she does a lot of hard work, uh, not just for the Sussex Squad community, but I believe her vocation is, is um, Oh, gosh, I don't know if it's uh, anthropology or sociology, but whatever it is, there's always so much to learn there. And I never walk away from Sussex Global UK and not feel that much uh, brighter. So uh, thank you again, Ivy, for all of the uh, stuff that you've uh, uh, done for not just us, but for everyone. And um and thank you for stopping by to say hi to us occasionally. So there you go. Um, remember, it's on a community tab. You could go over there and leave a kind word or two. Uh, let me see. Just out of curiosity, I want to see how many people have already responded. Wow, 93 comments and 314 likes. So... Okay, at least I know it, at the very least 314 people have seen it and some of you all have left comments. That's almost, uh, what is it, one out of three people. So that's actually a lot. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. All right, um, <clears throat> uh, let us get on with it then. I love the way you guys all seem to um, 
rally for one another. That is uh, a, a good thing and greatly appreciate it. Uh, sometimes this community is all, you know, we have on any given day. So, of course, we have our friends and our families, but uh, hopefully along with being at home, uh, you find this as a safe space. So, um, and to keep it a safe space, uh, just as always, be respectful of others. Uh, and that's that's a good place to start. Okay, let's keep moving in. All right, so there's the news I told you about. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to laugh already. You know, it's better to build up to something like that. But um, the queen will take a break from public duties for some downtime after holding the royal fort since King's cancer diagnosis. Another tricky week for the royal family. But Camilla has found reserves of energy that even she didn't think she had. <laughs> reserves of energy. You know, in horse racing, uh, sometimes when they want those thoroughbreds to uh, run a better race or have longer endu endurance, they. Um, you know, they they give them a little uh, cocktail. So <laughs> I don't doubt that if you can uh, if you can do that with an Olympic sprinter or you can do that with a racehorse, surely you can uh, pep up old Camilla, the old ball and Jane. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much, M. Uh, yeah, I'll just say M uh, for the uh, cash app. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Thank you so much for being here. So, yeah, if you can pep up uh, the old mare, uh, the, an old racehorse or something like that, then surely you can uplift, um, you know, our... our um, Queen consort, right? Uh, somebody's got to do it. Um, you know, in the old days, they would use things like pulleys and chains and um, like uh, iron corsets and stuff like that just to, you know, keep them standing up straight. But uh, now they have other things. <laughs> And since she's not being tested by the Olympic Committee, or uh, since she's not being tested at the racetrack, um, I think she'll be okay. As far as I know, um, the Royal Ascot only checks the four-legged variety, not, um, not the others. So she should be okay. But uh, you see, she had to take those shoes off and everything because she tired. She's tarot. You hear me? Not tired, but tarot. That's what they call it in the South, tarot. That's when you're so tired that you can't even get that the all the letters out. So you just you drop a few letters and you're not tired. You're tarot, tarot. You drop that D, tarot. So she's so tired that she had to drop the D. So she's definitely tarot. There's just tarot. Anyway, <laughs> so she's taking some time off. So really, I don't know how much longer they're only going to have two, because in the past week, you all do realize that this has been the face of the British monarchy. In the past week, to anyone who's been paying attention, this has been the face of the British monarchy. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me, uh, uh oh, Church Nelly, I hope I didn't just um, time you out or something. Let me see. I thought I was on the other screen. Okay, let me add. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pin to the top of the chat another wonderful Sussex friendly space. And that, of course, is BS Speaks Royally, uh, famous for the trash time. The trash time. 
on any given weekday when you want to, you know, get some royalty, check it out. Trash time and weekends too, but trash time. All right. Uh, so yeah, they have been the face of the British monarchy for the past uh, week. And oh, anytime you can somehow push that vicious bowl of jello, um, Andrew, uh, take him from the background and put him, you know, in the foreground. Uh, you, you're obviously desperate, but didn't we have this conversation? So after the queen's funeral, after the coronation, after the coronation, I wasn't the only one that said it. So I'm not going to be trying to take credit for what other people were saying, but, um, I did come to my own conclusion as well that they don't have anything else. They have nothing. They have nothing. The next big event will mean that William is king. That's it. They don't have anything else. Now, I heard someone ask in another area, um, is there going to be some type of big funeral service for the person who just died in the past week? Well, he was not of royal blood, so it's definitely not going to involve horses. At least I don't suspect it will, unless they, you know, want to have a little mercy on them. But otherwise, I don't suspect there's going to be any horses. There's not going to be a gun carriage or anything like that. Um, it's not going to be pomp and circumstance on that scale. It will probably be a family service. Um, who knows? It may not even, uh, the service may not even take place at the St. George Chapel. Definitely not Westminster Abbey. Definitely not that. Um, I would say in all likelihood, it's going to be at some little country parish church, in some country parish church, perhaps something on his parents' property. But um, I don't suspect it's going to be a big affair. Uh, and since they've said nothing else about it, I'm curious to know if the funeral has already taken place. Um, I have not heard anything, but either way, uh, I do feel awful about this as far as his parents are concerned and his uh, widow. I mean, this has got to be a big shock. It has got to be a big shot. I mean, all conspiracy theories aside, but on the day of the um I guess, um, prayer service or whatever they called it for Constantine, we find out that, uh, Tom, what is it, Thomas Kingston uh, has died. And then, of course, William did not show up. And that William not showing up seems to have been a much bigger blow than I think we even realize because the tabloid media they seem to be way more bothered about it than they're, I mean, I would say more than they're letting on, but they are bothered about it because they did let on. They were not just dismissive about it. And in some cases, on the heels of the comments about Gaza, it seems like they were downright hostile about it. You tell us something. You, we have been covering for you, so if you're not going to talk about yourself, then you better give us Kate. I don't know. I really cannot tell you what's at play. But one thing I do know for sure, they have nothing. It will be years until uh, George marries. And out of the three siblings, they may actually especially if Charlotte and Louis, if either of them two are dating someone and is serious, they may be pressured to put off their wedding until George marries first. It really depends. They, they do uh, schedule these things. And so if George is not seeing anyone, well, then maybe they won't have to wait. But if they're all serious relationships across all three siblings, then the pressure will be on for the others to wait so that 
you know, maybe they'll space them apart just so that people will have something to celebrate. Because aside from that, you will have Charles, um, whenever, you know, and I hope he lives a long time, but whenever he goes, uh, William, who's already said that he doesn't want anything big, but that's the same thing Charles was playing around with. But especially given the mood of the country and given the level of the economy at that time, would they dare have a big occasion? And also, I can guarantee you this, if, if people were left a bit deflated because Charles uh, seemed a bit grumpy for his coronation, and then Camilla comes stumping in there like um, like some kind of Wild West cattle show. Um, <laughs> when she trundled into Westminster Abbey, if you think that was disappointing, will Kate be at a coronation? Will there be some other queen at a coronation? Will there even be a coronation? And let's say there is. At about this point, I don't know anybody's going to be that excited for there to be a coronation, especially given the state of the economy and on the heels of the big expenditure that was necessary for the Queen's funeral and then Charles' uh, coronation. So I tell you, it's not a good place for that institution to be right now. They are not in a very good place. Things are pretty uh, bad for them. And I, of course, don't care. I am enjoying the uh, spectacle. I am enjoying it. I kid you not. I am enjoying it. I am enjoying every bit of it. And I explained yesterday, I'm not in a very sympathetic mood. Uh, one of the reasons why this channel exists is because of how brutal they were to a pregnant woman, a woman of African descent that just happens to be also an American woman. That's why this channel exists. This is why so many other channels exist, is because on sheer principle of it, we said no. We said no. That's why there's so many people on the Instagram and on the TikTok and on the Facebook and on that thing that was once called Twitter. That's why so many people are there because they said no, not on my watch. And look at what they're down to absolutely disgusting specimens of humanity. Camilla, who took her part in, in, in uh, the abuse of, of Diana. And then of course, Andrew, who wasn't such a nice person in the first place. He was always considered this very negative, uh, the only time that Andrew was a real star was the Falkland Island War. But aside from that, and, and this is why I get so frustrated, they keep making these comparisons to Harry. There is nothing about him that compares to Harry, not one single thing, not even the idea of being a spare. Charles never really had a spare. He didn't really have a spare. They were too busy messing with him. <laughs> Charles was the one being bullied. <laughs> His father bullied him. His mother bullied him. And probably whipped him like Ellie Mae Clampett. So he was the one being bullied. He didn't really have a spare. I don't ever remember tales of Andrew being picked on or Andrew being scapegoated. I don't remember that. 
I'd have to dig very deep, but I just, I don't recall that. I don't recall Andrew going through that. But you know what else is different? There was really no Royal Rota back then. The Royal Rota is a very modern uh, thing that kind of came along to help Charles and Camilla. Didn't they establish the Royal Rota to help Charles and Camilla? To make sure that only desired people had access only people that they could depend upon would have access. How long have we been using the term Royal Rota? So I don't remember anybody ever bullying uh, Andrew. But I do remember, uh, you know, Charles was getting it coming and going. Uh, Leg says, Harry doesn't care for the order of the teddy bear. <laughs> yes. Harry doesn't care how you lay teddy bears. He does not have a stencil or a map or any type of diagram to explain the placements of teddy bears. Thank you, Legs. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. We said it a long time ago. They don't have anything. After that coronation is over with, there's going to be this prolonged period of time that will only be interrupted when Charles makes his transition. And of course, we never really envisioned Charles uh, being ill with cancer when we came up with that. And so, you know, I tell you, it, it doesn't mean that Charles is terminally ill, no matter what anybody thinks. Um, we don't know what kind of cancer it is. And there's a reason why they're not telling us. I believe the reason cannot be good, but then it may not be the worst thing in the world. Uh, but whatever it is, he has decided that he's unable to keep up with the level of work that he was doing before. And it could be a matter of him uh, stepping back so that his son can step up. Well, if that's what he's doing, he's wasting his time because uh, William is no help to anyone, including himself. So um, there you have it, the axis of, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say the axis of evil, but how about the axis of upheaval? You have the um, lazy Kate, lazy William, lazy Camilla. All three of them are lazy. On the best of days, they're lazy. And then, of course, you have... Uh, Andrew, the sick old man, who always seemed to have find himself in a spot of bother, mostly because there was no role for him. He had no role. If, they, if there's anything that I can say that that institution was guilty of, is that they didn't have much of a role. But again, I don't know enough about him to know whether or not he would have actually have fulfilled any role. Andrew's biggest crime, as far as I'm concerned, is what he had been accused of and what his mother had paid out for. But after that, the worst thing about Andrew is just um, he, he had made a lot of mistakes out of a sense of entitlement, whereas Harry went to his cottage and shopped at TK Maxx and, and kept a low profile. Andrew wanted the good life. Andrew meant to live every bit the luxurious life as his brother, the Prince of Wales. And rightly so. I mean, it, it's not like the resources were not there. I don't know if he actually was doing enough work to deserve it, but Andrew wanted a chalet in Switzerland. He got it. Andrew wanted access to helicopters and jets. He got it. Andrew needed money. He got that too. They, they made him the roving or, or whatever, the special envoy or something like that. They were lying in his pockets, allegedly. They were lying in his pockets doing that work. So he had a, a very comfortable lifestyle. And in exchange for some of the favors that he got, you have images of people sitting on his mama's throne or sitting in her log cabin and all that kind of stuff. He sold a lot of access to people. He, he got a lot of money. 
he had got some good money. All of it would have gone unnoticed had he not gotten in trouble. But that is who he has to deal with. That's who Charles has to deal with. Uh, Edward, Edward doesn't seem to be so well himself, physically well. Um, and of course, Sophie, you know, he could always count on Sophie and Anne. So really, they the only people that he can count on, Charles can count on, is Sophie and Anne, because you're not going to get that much work out of Camilla. I'm really surprised that Camilla has done this much work. But then again, I said the same thing about uh, Will and Kate. When they were so busy, when, when they were so busy, I was shocked. I was shocked at how much engagements they were doing. But that was in response to Harry and Meghan. They were being pushed and coerced into doing the most so that they could keep up with Harry and Meghan. None of it was because they were trying to honor their commitment to the British people. They did what they had to do to compete with the Sussexes, not to do an effective job, not to uh, honor their grandparents or their ancestors or even Charles. They worked because they had to, and it was never because they wanted to. They would be just as comfortable staying home and going on frequent trips to islands they would be just as comfortable doing that. And as long as nobody said anything to them, they would not uh, deviate from that schedule. Uh, Sharon Lambert, let's see. Oh, you just became a member. Well, thank you so much, Sharon Lambert. And thank you for being here on Royal Sussex. Oh, is Special K here? Uh, let's see. Leg says, Charles III treated Harry like a spare because his siblings weren't. Yes, yes, absolutely. He treated Harry like a spare because his siblings never ever showed him that much deference. And they never needed that much from him because the queen made sure, that's a great point, Legs. The queen made sure that uh, Edwina got the big house. The queen made sure that... Um, that uh, the Princess Royale, Princess Anne, has the big house. And she even made sure that that overstuffed teddy bear, the sick old man, Andrew, that he got the big house. All of them were set up very nicely by the queen. Now, Charles is king, and he is doing nothing for Harry. He's doing nothing for Harry. He lavished affection onto William, but he never really did anything for Harry. He never ever uh, went out of his way to make sure Harry had all of the accoutrements of his position, living in a cellar somewhere and then moving into Nottingham Cottage. And even his room at Clarence House was allowed to have been converted into Camilla's dressing room? You mean the place where Harry spent part of his youth is some place where people have to envision that old whiskey-soaked, <laughs> nicotine-stained uh, queen consort uh, walking around in, in, in those big uh, 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 granny bloomers? Is that what we must envision? Ugh, ugh, just yuck. You mean to tell me the space that Harry once occupied in Clarence House is now some place where that 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 gin and tonic soaked, uh, whiskey sour uh, smelling, uh, nicotine uh, tainted uh, queen consort walks around in her big granny bloomers? and panty looms before she can. Uh, <laughs> before she goes out and face the public, that's where uh, a couple of uh, housemaids uh, gather around and, and pull and yank at her corset to try to make her uh, resemble a woman. Is that is that what they've done with Harry's bedroom? <laughs> 
Thank you, legs. I I I hate the thought of it. It just makes me feel ill. Uh, Joan Garcia says, yet will not, uh, can't take uh, the money with him when he dies. Here, here. Thank you so much for saying that because those estates are passed on to the heir to the throne fully intact. But William does get 22 million pounds a year to line his pockets so that he can pay for the pleasures in life, whatever they may be. I don't even want to think about it because I may need a, a penicillin shot just to get through it. So, but whatever he finds pleasurable, I'm either going to need a penicillin shot or a 12-step program just to get through it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, like I say, I'm just sitting back and enjoying the show. Um, they please keep doing what they're doing. I want them to keep it up. So if you take a look here, <laughs> you had Anne with 214 engagements. Now, if she was doing real work, that would almost be a full-time schedule for the average person in this world. I mean, that's about as much as some people do with part-time work, right? Part-time workers may, you know, work that much. Um, and Charles, same. Edward, you know, that's that's somebody filling in at a coffee shop after work, um, working almost, well, not quite half the year, is it? Charles is about half of the year, but still, not bad. But then you get to um, William, and it just drops off from there. Uh, Camilla, 102 engagements. 102 engagements. The Duke of Gloucester, who, you know, he's got his own estate and everything. He shouldn't have to keep up with the rest of them. But uh, take a look at that. A hundred. And then, of course, uh, 94, 90 for Kate, 90. He, she's just ahead of the Duke of Kent. And Princess Alexandra, that's the one that they had to prop up with two by fours at the uh, coronation. <laughs> they had to prop her up with some scaffolding just to get her to look alive and animated, you mean to tell me she managed to squeeze out 40 engagements? And don't forget, some of these engagements are two and three engagements on one day or one visit. Like if they do a Zoom call, that's an engagement. If you go from one place to the other, that's an engagement. How many weeks is it in a year? 52 weeks? So 52 weeks out of the year, and let's say if Alexandra can squeeze a couple of things into each uh, outing, that means that she would possibly have only worked 20 occasions. Let's give her 30 occasions she's actually worked, and yet she's living on the public dole. I mean, sure, they may have inherited some money here or there, they have maybe even been paid for some commercial ventures. But by and large, their lifestyle, everyone you see there, is afforded through the British public, through the uh, king's subjects. All of that, and Charles was only available for 181 engagements last year, one of which I think may have been his coronation. And then let's see, two, the coronation concert. Anyway, all of those are counted as engagements. The opening of parliament where everybody looks at you in awe, that's an engagement. That's, that's what they do for a living because those uh, uh, reptilian, inbred, uh, vertebrae, 
eggs of theirs drop first. That's why. That's why they have that lavish lifestyle. Lex says, how many engagements are funerals? <laughs> are you trying to say that they all got funerals coming up? <laughs> funerals versus ribbons. And is the funeral a ribbon cutting ceremony in disguise? Um, <laughs> Legs, I wonder if they count that as an engagement, like your last official engagement. If you are the deceased, do they count that as an engagement? I wonder. And so don't forget you all, going to that prayer service for Constantine, that was an engagement. That's an engagement. Hey, Love Wins Movement. Thank you for being here. That's an engagement. Okay, so this is how um, we saw Kate last time. It, picture it, Christmas 2023. It was the best of times. It was the best of times because things were going to go terribly wrong after that. So you have the king and queen are joined by almost all the family for Christmas at Sandringham, including William, Kate, their children, the Tindos, Andrew and Fergie, while Harry and Megan stay away. They just could not rest without making it about Harry and Megan, could they? Could they? No, they couldn't rest. Uh-uh. That would be too much to ask to leave the Sussexes out of it. You see, even when Harry and Meghan aren't there, they're still there. And look down there at the bottom. It says, um, uh, are spending a day in L.A. with their children, Prince Louis and Princess Lilibet. <laughs> really? Really? See, they throw this stuff out there so fast. Private Norfolk will say, once again, the international, I'm sorry, the uh, traditional royal festivities. Wow, that's kind of small. Um, except for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who are spending the day in L.A. with their children, Prince Louis and Princess Lilibet. Is this like some kind of subliminal way that they're asking uh, for a trade? Because if it is, I think it's just sick. It's just sick. Oh, man. Prince Louis and Princess Lilibet. <laughs> you all, this is why I say you have to hurry up and screenshot. When you see something like this, even if you don't have a space, screenshot it and forward it to just about everybody you know who has a space. Don't even play favorites. Just forward it so we can have a record of it, that little Freudian slip. <laughs> oh, I love it. Lisey D, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Thank you so much for being here tonight and being a member of Royal Sussex. Okay. Um, so was Omid Scobie right? Is this really the end game? Omid's uh, book was an exercise, which was more guidance for them by pointing out some of the things that they have gotten wrong. Omid Scobie was hoping that they could put things right. It was a warning. It was a warning. And they did not heed the warning. Instead, they decided to run him out of the country the same way they drove the Sussexes out of the country. So rather than fix your problems, rather than uh, acknowledge the errors of your way, is that your way of dealing with things is to try to stifle anyone who points out the obvious? Apparently it is because, apparently it is because Omid Scobie is gone. 
the Sussexes is gone. We ain't hardly heard a word from Omid Scobie. Barely a word. Not now thing. Not now. And yet, as Harry and Megan said, we will just go. And you all can be on the front of the magazines and the newspapers. Remember that? They said that. Yet you all can have everything. Just leave us alone. Harry and Meghan were willing to leave that country so that Will and Kate and Camilla and Charles could have the cover of everything printed, edited, uh, uh, packed, wrapped, bundled, you, you name it. Lock, stock, and barrel. Just take it. Take it! And what happened? They can't even celebrate Christmas without bringing up Harry and Meghan. While Harry and Meghan stay away. That's subliminal. You know that, right? Stay away. Not Harry and Meghan enjoy Christmas in California. We could not acknowledge that they're enjoying their Christmas in California. We have to pretend that they got up real early or stayed up late so that they could turn on the telly and watch the rest of them trundle their <laughs> trundle their way to church, right? So they could watch them trundle their way to church and the Sussexes would retreat to their little uh, fig uh, wrapped up like a real Christmas tree. They got like a little fig tree somewhere with some uh, lemons on it or something, little um, Salerno butter cookies and, and candy canes so they can go to their little pathetic Christmas tree in, in that little shack they live in in Montecito, right? And and they could just all cry together and, and then uh, <laughs> Doria comes out of the kitchen with some bone soup. They ran out of meat, so she's just boiling a bone and an old leather shoe. That's what they're having for Christmas supper. While everybody back in England lives the good life, that's what they want people to believe, is that the Sussexes are boiling grass for supper, while over there in Narnia, they got duck and, and pheasant and all that other kind of stuff. <laughs> Harry and Megan are serving hobo stew, and uh, the rest of the family are eating at that table about long as the house. Girl, bye. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. This is my favorite right here. A royal charm offensive. Harry, who? Again, just like before. You can't celebrate Christmas without the Sussexes. Even before Christmas, Harry who? Royals to put on a united front at Buckingham Palace reception tonight as they brush off Omid Scobie's racism row with a series of engagements with adoring members of the public. Oh, they went and did the usual. They went and gathered other people's kids William still pretending like he knows that homeless guy. And of course, uh, Charles uh, doing the old tree planting. All of this stuff that they were pulling so that they can show how unbothered they are by Omid Scobie's book. The Prince of Wales left sh uh, shoppers stunned this morning. Yeah, they're stunned. If you saw William doing some work, wouldn't you be stunned? Left shoppers stunned this morning after he was spotted selling the magazine outside a Tesco's in Hammersmith, West London. Uh, the beaming royal 41, uh, what is that, appeared relaxed. And uh, don't forget you all, I want you to take a look at his arm. He's wearing a Rolex. If you were out there among all those peasants, and you haven't done anything to deserve it, and you're wearing a Rolex, wouldn't you be relaxed? Wouldn't you be smiling and relaxed? 
As he chatted with vendor Dave Martin, 61, who has been a friend since they hit the streets to sell the magazine together 18 months ago. So they have been friends for 18 months. And you mean to tell me he's still homeless? You've been his friend for 18 months. You just inherited a billion dollar fortune. Why is this man out here still selling those magazines? Hello. And then Kate was also out and about today, receiving a warm welcome as she opened new Children's Day surgery at, uh, at Guy's and St. Thomas Hospital. Guy's and St. Thomas, that's the name, ain't it? In London before returning, I'm sorry, re, is it reuniting? With fundraising, fundraising amputee, amputee? yes. Um, Tony Hudgel, Hudgel and his adopted mother. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's two engagements for her. Hospital and then reuniting with the amputee. That's two engagements. And then, of course, Charles with his tree thing, whatever that was. But um, yeah, so that was how they were answering Omit by looking as more by looking even more out of touch and unaware than before the book hit the <laughs> their answer to Omid Scobie was to look even more out of touch to look more unaware to look more uh senseless than they did before keep calm and carry on you remember that night when Will and Kate insulted crown princess victoria and then of course the big headline one for all all for one i don't know who comes up with this nonsense but they are doing the most and of course they could not talk about that without harry and megan tucked in between the caption top and bottom top royals unite for palace ball well, I tell you, back in Hammersmith, that should go over pretty big. Uh, there's one person I didn't see wearing his tuxedo, and that was poor Dave Martin, who was probably outside still selling those doggone uh, street books or whatever he's selling. What is it, the big book? He's still out there selling magazines while his friend of 18 months... <laughs> His friend of 18 months is inside of a palace eating pheasant. And people wonder why there wasn't more of an outpouring for Kate and her mystery illness. If you're in the palace eating pheasant or farguar or whatever you're eating behind those big candelabras with gold flatware and, and gold rim plates. If you're inside of a palace or a castle enjoying that kind of a lifestyle, why would anybody stand out there with a candlelight vigil praying for somebody with that lavish lifestyle? Obviously, you don't need any help, do you? This is their answer to Omid Scobie. Nothing uh, works better than, than excess. Nothing impresses better than excess. Because what was good for Queen Elizabeth II is good for Will and Kate and Charles and Camilla in 2023, which is when that happened, 2023. That is the way that you would impress the world is by having a lavish, sumptuous meal in that gilded cage while other people are outside selling magazines or working in some hospital ward somewhere. What better way to impress people 
I don't know who, I don't know who is the ones selling this to them, telling them, you know what, get out your tiaras, get out your white uh, ties and tails, because in order to combat this tone deaf, um, what do you call it? Um, this tone deaf, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, um, nope, not that. Nope, not that. This this tone deaf, this tone deaf image. Okay, yeah. Rather than than give in to this tone deaf image that we have, thanks to Omen Scobie and that dreaded book, why don't we throw a ball? Yes, we'll have a ball with tiaras and candelabras. And of course, we're gonna shine up those chandeliers. Nothing impresses better than having clean chandeliers and other rich folks. Let me know how that works out for y'all. Okay, United and Defiant. Royals put on show of defiance days after being smeared in Omen Scobie's race row. King and Queen are joined by Prince William and Dazzling Cadiz. They mingle with a glittering group of global guests at Buckingham Palace diplomatic reception. They are spending more on this dinner than the G. GM, what is it, the, the, the gross national product, yeah, the GNP of several of the countries there. Several of those countries don't have that much money in reserve as they're spending on this dinner. Baron, so when they lay off staff, <laughs> no one's working. <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> Oh, no. They ain't going to have no layoff. They ain't going to have no layoff. Uh, they ain't gonna, if you're talking about the palace staff, they ain't going to have a layoff. They got way too much money. It's no way in the world that Charles could exist without somebody squeezing his toothpaste. Gosh, I hope that's not a double entendre. Yeah, unless somebody's squeezing his toothpaste. I wonder if that's what happened to his prostate. Just asking for a friend. You know, sometimes <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, <laughs> I gotta stop. That's even tacky for me. But thank you so much, B Martin. But yeah, just be careful squeezing your toothpaste, cause uh <laughs> not only can it make your eyes bulge, but you might also enlarge your prostate. So be careful. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let me stop. Let me stop. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So as I was saying, or, or as they used to say on uh, Batman, meanwhile, back at the Batcave. But yeah, so that's their show of defiance. You all, I said at the time that this is all well and good, but come first of the year, they all going to go off on vacation. So they're just trying to get the most in. I had no idea that at least two of them was going to be on sick leave and that uh, Camilla was going to have to was going to have to do more work. You know, I'm afraid to say step up. <laughs> I told you I have a complex about saying step it up. So I have to catch myself before I say that. Uh, but yeah, so Camilla would have to do more work and that William would also retreat. Isn't it something? Kate's the one sick and William took off too. <laughs> How stupid can you be? How stupid can you be? William is the one that's sick. I mean, I'm sorry. Kate is the one that's sick. And William took off too. You already have uh, lost your father's ability to work. 
you can't really count on Camilla. And you took off two? Whatever is wrong with Kate, and I do mean whatever is wrong with her, you still have an awesome responsibility as the Prince of Wales. You still have an awesome responsibility. And you just cannot afford no more than, say, a single mother with three children. You cannot afford to take off because somebody's sick. I don't know that most people are able to do that, especially when they have an entire nation to answer to and you take off from work. Good golly, Miss Molly. Uh, let, me just, let me just say this to give you a little perspective about what I'm getting at here. When... John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Jacqueline Kennedy held a birthday party. What was it? Days later, she held a birthday party for one of her children so that they could have some normalcy. She did not want them to miss anything. And that, of course, was someone who sat next to her husband, who was... Uh, assassinated right next to her. And she had the poise and elegance to throw a birthday party for one of her children so that she would be available to them, right? He has a staff of 62 people, including a nanny. And yet, and yet, he's unable to work even a couple of days a week. He's only been out for maybe seven or eight occasions. That's it. That's it. He has a staff. And if his children are able to go to school, which is what they said, if his children are able to go to school in spite of whatever's wrong with mommy, then at the very least, he can go to work. It has been said that he and the nanny have. Uh, taking turns doing the school run. So if that's the case, you can work. Duke of Cornwall with an entire uh, business portfolio, you can work. But instead, as soon as they said that she was sick, he said, I'm taking off too. Oi, I'm taking off too. There was no pretense of wanting to do more. Even though his father is sick, the first thing he did was say, I'm taking off. It would be different if this was something that was out of character for him. But you know nobody blinked because they don't expect much from you anyway. They don't expect much from you anyway. The surprise would be if he did not miss a day, right? If he never missed a day, that would be a surprise. <laughs> but that he's unable to work because he has to see to Catherine, that's not a surprise. That's expected. That's expected. You didn't hear Camilla say, oh, my God, I can't work. Charles is, is sick. You didn't hear her say that. Not to mention the fact she was in and out of that hospital like she was stealing something. I don't know if she had rubber gloves in her purse or gauze or something, but she was running in and out of there like she was stocking her medicine. <laughs> like she was stocking her medicine cabinet. Willie, we only seen him go to that hospital one time. That's it. But remember, um, Rebecca English said that William will be in heaven and earth to be there for Kate. Not only was he able to bend it 
he twisted it so much we couldn't see him come and go because he wasn't there, because he does not care. Uh, Joan Garcia says, Baron, I keep saying, take your show on the road. <laughs> oh, I should. I really need to because I think more people need to hear this because this little clever uh, ruse that this royal family has on the rest of the known world is um, it's pretty impressive that they can get away with it. But what's worse for them is that now nobody's buying it. The more they expose themselves, the more people are coming over to our point of view, as evident by all of these people talking about them on TikTok. I love it. But thank you so much, Joan Garcia. And thank you for being a member and for being here tonight. Yep. I'm going to try that, though. Every time something happens, the first thing I'm going to say is, I'm taking off. I'm taking off, too. <laughs> I'm going to try that. Okay. So right here. Um, so the Inquirer has claimed that Charles has six months to live. From the looks of things, Charles looks uh, rather, you know, robust as we speak, although he's taken precautions because, well, you know, he can't be around people and he's, you know, vulnerable to infection and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's not good for him to be around a bunch of people. In other words, maybe if he would have uh, used as much caution during the pandemic when his mother just somehow out of the blue happened to catch, you know, the pandemic. If he uses that protocol that he should have used then, then he should be OK. But, you know, I don't know. They won't say what kind of cancer it is. I hope that um, that, you know, he, he has has a lot of time ahead of him. You know, another 10, 15, 20 years, whatever he can get. I hope so, because his his son is not ready. Uh, his heir is not ready. And for the sake of the Sussexes, I don't want to see uh, William on that throne ever. Because William will, you know, be in a much more powerful position and still capable of making trouble. He will still be making trouble. Now, it will probably cost him at some point. It may be costing him now. We just don't really know it. We just don't have that confirmation. But uh, it's going to cost William in the long run. It will. Eventually, it's going to catch up to him. And, um, you know, I can't say so far he has been lucky because um, we just don't know uh, some of the the, the perils of being William because they're not going to tell us. But we can guess. We can look at a few things and say, yeah, if he wasn't such a William, that probably wouldn't have happened. Just like we can look at Charles and say, well, if he had, had been a better person, that probably wouldn't have happened. Like right now, he has this huge headache with William. But the one that who could help him right now is the one that was driven out of the country. He completely ran Harry and his wife and his kids out of the country. And who would be better positioned to help them right now than Harry? Well, right now he doesn't have Harry because of his arrogance. His benign arrogance is what's costing him right now. You know how they were saying they were leaving the church and he was like telling his sons, oh, boys, please don't make my final yells uh, terrible or something like that, he said. He wants to live the rest of his life in peace, so please don't argue. But you're the parent, and kids are always looking for guidance. Now, one of the kids was paying attention. Harry was paying attention. Harry was known as being a bit of a watcher. Harry sat back and observed and learned, and he would literally drink in all of the knowledge around him. He listened to people. Just like when he went to Africa and he was with Teal and whoever the other person was, he learned a lot down there. 
And he speaks about the things that he's learned about this world. He can expand upon it, explain it, and use it to help people. That's what he has is a life of service. But William, with all of the advantages that he has, he doesn't have not seemed to have learned anything. And he is accountable to no one. So I hope Charles is not reduced to, to six months to live. There's no way in the world the Inquirer can know that. There's no way in the world they can know that. They're just guessing. They're just guessing. They don't know that. But they're selling magazines or newspapers or whatever you want to call it. And that's all to it. But <clears throat> I wish Charles the best. I really do. Uh, I think when Charles is with Harry, he sees Diana. Yeah, that's a possibility. That is a very good possibility that his mannerisms, his actions, um, some of the things that he say, he may have um, definitely um, enhanced his, or should I say, uh, you know, taken in some of her character traits. And maybe he finds that a bit jarring. Love Wynn says, and Megan has completely enhanced Harry's awareness and knowledge around social issues. Here, here, absolutely. That's why they're together is because they um, they understand each other. They speak the same language. You know, uh, when a couple really loves each other, they have a language of their own, and they speak each other's language. That's very powerful. That's good for anybody who has that. Uh, Casey said, Charles never a parent, <clears throat> excuse me, he did his obligatory deposit for the heir and carried on with the side chick. The children and wife were unimportant. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that he invested enough in, in his children. I mean, there is those uh, periods of time when um, Harry had his father's attention, but you know, the bad part about that is because he hired that spin master to help reform his reputation and to help Camilla with her reputation. Actually, I think Camilla is the one who found him. But whatever the case may be, I'm sure there's there's enough evidence to say. But was he there to nurture Harry or was he just using Harry for points? Right. Like when they went to the um, the drug rehab place. Well, Harry went there with his father because his father wanted to take him, you know, along so that they could do one of their royal duty events or whatever. And so yeah, Harry said, OK, I'll go. And then what happens? They turn around and use that when they tell the lie that Harry had to go to a rehab because he was experimenting with drugs. But the truth is, Harry was not um, signed into that place. Harry went there as a favor to his dad. And when they uh, were able to spin that story, not only did Charles not correct it, but he sat there and watched his uh, poll numbers go up in response to him playing the doling father. So just as much as I could say, oh, Charles took Harry to Africa because he wanted to spend some time with him and show him Africa, or was he doing that to help his poll numbers like any cheap politician? So either way, as a kid, I'm sure Harry appreciated the company of his father. But whether or not he learned a lot from his father, whether or not he was truly nurtured by his father, well, that is that is something only Harry can answer because none of us were there. But we do know that they've had that time together. There's, you know, photos of them in Africa. But just by coincidence, Harry was selected by his grandmother to go to these Commonwealth countries I mean, there's, there's no way that we can assess 
how much money Harry has made for Britain. We can't know that. But when they were speaking of leaving the Commonwealth in Jamaica, it was Harry to the rescue. And in most of these Commonwealth countries, if they could choose who would they like to visit, Harry's is at the top of the list. I don't care where it is, Harry's at the top of the list. They don't care for those other ones. They really don't want um, Kate and um, uh, William. They really don't want them. Um, Cain and unable. Uh, Charles and Camilla, well, you know, Charles, like him or not, he gets on with people. He knows how to put together these things because not only has he paid attention, but he's done the work, which unlike his son, who by the, you know, the same age had done very little, speaking, of course, of William, not Charles. So, um, and, and, and I'll say, I'll repeat myself again. I have a photo of William and Kate being carried around by the natives on those thrones or whatever, or floats, if you will. I have a picture of the queen and I have a picture of Philip. I do not have a picture of Charles being carried around by the natives. Now, did Charles just by chance escape that photo op? Or was he wise enough to know that it was a bad idea? Right? So if it was because he knew that that optic would come back to haunt him, um, or he just, you know, by chance said, no, nah, that's okay. Whatever the case may be, he's been to those places, but we don't have an image of him being carried about like some deity. You know, with the queen and Philip, you can say, well, that was another time. But Will and Kate, what was it, 2012, 2011, 2013? What's their excuse? What's their excuse? Dumb. Both of them, they're just not that bright. They're not that bright. They are not fit for purpose and not ready to sit on a throne. They will never be ready, ever. So right here, uh, Prince Harry urged to step up. <laughs> Prince Harry urged to do more work and help brother Prince William in his hour of need. So. We had that little back and forth, all of us, about whether or not Harry was going back. Most of us said no. Should Harry go back? Most of us said no. And I said this was just a kind word and gesture that got out of hand. Your father's sick. You go to see him and you say, if you need anything, let me know. I'd be glad to help out. That's what any child would say to his father. However, in this situation, the press, whether or not that was even said, the press took that and ran with it. And they said, oh, no, he ain't coming back. William said, no. The thing is, you all need him more than he needs you. He doesn't need your money. Although this past week they were on TV talking about how broke they are. Even though they're donating money to worthy causes and charities, uh, Harry and Meghan are supposed to be so dense and so stupid that they're giving money away to try to impress people, I guess, and they don't realize that they can't afford that lavish lifestyle that they have. Right? This is what uh, Richard Eden and... Those other monsters, Rebecca English, oh, they're so worried about whether or not he can afford his lifestyle. They can afford it, all right? They can afford it. The thing is, can you afford to not have his help? Well, with all of what has been said and what has been done, that is impossible. You have made an environment so hostile toward him that the only thing you all can think of is if he leaves his wife and children, he could come back here and help his brother. A brother who won't help himself. 
The brother who yelled, I'm taking off too, as soon as they said his wife was off. That's the brother that won't help himself, who lives five minutes from an engagement and didn't show up for personal reasons. Harry offered a half in, half out. Harry and Meghan said, we will do the work for free. You can have us for free. We will divide our time in North America and we will help out whenever, wherever you need us. Very generous. They said, no half in, no half out. And if you all watched the video that I posted uh, early this morning, you may remember in the video, uh, Harry said, there seemed to be only one option and that was nothing. No half in, no half out, uh, no stay because we're not staying. And the other, the, the other extreme of it was nothing at all. And so that's what they took was nothing. They even offered at the time to give their titles back. And they said, no, keep the titles, keep the titles. So they kept the titles, right? Remember, no matter what they tell you in the tabloids, Harry and Meghan offered those titles back and they told them to keep it. And I believe it was Dickie Arbiter who explained why it would be a bad idea for them to take those titles because nobody in America is going to run around calling Megan Princess Henry of Wales. They're just going to call her Princess Megan. I know that. You know that. Everybody knows that. So that's why they would rather she look beneath Kate by being the Duchess of Sussex while now Kate is the Princess of Wales. That is why they don't want to take those titles away. So they can keep threatening, but there's one thing that they cannot take no matter what. Uh, Harry's first name is Prince, okay? Prince Harry. We have only known him to be Prince Harry. We affectionately call him Harry, but in most things, most places, you don't ever see uh, Harry will be here. You will see Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. He's Prince Harry. So for all intent and purposes, his first name is Prince. And if he's a prince, then his wife is a princess, period. They cannot change that. No matter how they try to spin it, no matter how much clickbait they get out of it, they cannot take that away from him. He is a prince of the realm, a prince of the blood. He was born a prince and he's going to stay a prince. And now his children, because of, you know, that same accident of birth, his children are prince and princess. That was established as soon as his grandma died. Even though they want to change it, even though they want to change it, um, it would look very bad for them to go after children who have done absolutely nothing because you have a beef with their parents. So they can threaten. They're not through threatening. The press will find an excuse to, to start making threats against the children. Um, they get off on that. But anyway, let's move on. So, uh, the princess that can do anything, you all, they set Kate up. They set her up. That was a complete setup. Whereas before, they were so hypercritical of Kate, but never rooted in racism, of course. They were so hypercritical of Kate. Weighty Katie, lazy Katie, Kate, Kate, Kate. Now, everything is going Kate's way. But still, she's not happy. And the reason why she's not happy is because they are calling upon her to be somebody or something she certainly is not. There is no uh, scenario where Kate measures up to Megan. They have tried to make Kate a, a Jill Biden. They've tried to make Kate a um, um, 
Michelle Obama. They've tried to make her all these things that she is not and can never be. And I would feel sorry for her, but she's just such a mean, awful person. She's a very cruel person. I would feel sorry for her, but she's cruel. And a lot of the stuff that uh, caused so much pain and anguish for Megan was because she deliberately set out to hurt her, like wearing white to the wedding or making a big fuss about um, the uh, bridesmaids or whatever, uh, the flower girls making a big fuss out of their dresses. Knowing what it takes to plan a wedding, she deliberately became a, 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 an obstruction at every turn to the point where Megan began to cry. And then when they claimed that Kate, that Megan made Kate cry, they weaponized a white woman tears against a black woman, which is very dangerous. I don't care what country you're in, that's very dangerous. And she got the benefit of it because everybody ran to her side and, and caressed and held her and uplifted her so that she wouldn't feel bad because that mean black woman with her black woman's anger and rage injured her to do with her own wedding, injured her or to do with Megan's own wedding. They put so much on her that she collapsed. Whatever has caused her to disappear, it is because of that. I'm convinced of it. It is because of that. That is not who she is. The unbearable lightness of Kate Middleton. All we know about Kate Middleton revolves around clothes, nightclubs, wedding, toughish uh, country pursuits and expensive holidays. Is there anything behind the expectant smile other than an empty life? Now that's how they used to write about her. But enters Megan, she's Madame Curie. Uh, she's Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, she is Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. <laughs> She's all those things because a black woman shows up. Then all of a sudden, there's nothing she can't do. Remember, is there anything that she can't do? Well, the answer before was just about everything she can't do. But when, Kay, when Megan shows up, then all of a sudden she can walk on water, split the atom, and cure a disease all before lunch. All before lunch. And then just when you thought you saw it all, she is the phantom of Westminster Abbey. Remember how they tried to make us believe that she was sitting at that Christmas carol? That is a vehicle that was put together as an annual tradition for her so that she can look like the Mother Christmas. They threw that Christmas carol in her lap. They plan it. They execute it. All she has to do is show up, right? And so they decided in order to really push Megan into her place to really step on Megan. Why don't we show her that hidden talent that Kate has, you know, the three keys on the piano that she could repeat over and over again. So they have her put on the very same clothes that she wore on the night of the Christmas Carol. They put a bunch of candles around a piano at Westminster Abbey. And then along with someone to accompany her with a guitar and to sing, she sat there and banged on that piano um, like Linus on um, Charlie Brown. And everybody was like, ooh, is there anything Kate can't do? Duchess Wild Royal fans, as she hints, 
she will give first ever public piano performance during Christmas carol concert broadcasts. And people bought it. Now, people that know music said, huh? But you let them tell it. Not only has she the ability to split the atom, to cure disease, and uh, to walk on water, but she's also a concert pianist. And nobody knew it. All those years of practice really paid off so that she can tell Megan a thing or two, put Megan in her place. Megan, who graduated with a double major. Megan, who worked at an embassy. Megan, who speaks two languages and proficient in, with a third. A third. Uh, right, Megan, who spoke at the United Nations, women's whatever event, USO, um, what was it? The um, uh, World Vision, all that stuff. And of course, seven years on the television show, something anybody would be proud of to have an income like that. But yet, Megan has no talent. Megan just gets by with a smile. But Kate, the concert pianist, wife, mother, orator. <laughs> and of course, when we had this conversation before, you know, out of fairness, we reached out to Kensington Palace for comment, just so that we can get her side of things. And she said, Well, obviously, it'd be um, I would love to have met her, um, and and she's obviously she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to to look up to, um, obviously on the to this day and you know going forward and things, you know it is, you know it's a wonderful family. The, the members who I've who I've met have achieved a lot, and you know very inspirational. So um, yeah, I do. So that was the Kate that married into that family. And the Kate today is a formidable woman who is capable, and I do mean capable of anything. They set her up. They set her up. They tried to make her into something she was not, and her body responded the only way it knew how. What that response was is a mystery. Now, we've seen certain things that we recognize as this or that or the other, but out of respect for her privacy, we're not supposed to talk about it. And so, of course, me being a respectful person that I am, I won't stop talking about it, right? But they set her up, and it could not have happened to a better person as far as I'm concerned. Megan was driven to the brink because of this comparison to one of the most lazy people that have ever drawn a breath. And even with the vast resources at her beck and call, what they were able to get out of her was little or nothing. But because of her race, because of that institution, she is praised as being one of the most amazing women to have ever lived. That's a lot of pressure to put on anybody. And I cannot blame her for having sunk to whatever situation that she's in. You see, it's one thing to know who you are and to know what you're capable of. When you know yourself, it doesn't matter what people call you. But when you know that you're not that person and they try to elevate you into the stratosphere, something's going to go wrong. And it already has. Uh, Sussex Love, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Greatly appreciate it. 
And of course, um, even if Will and Kate hit rock bottom, they can always count on the members of the EDL, that's the England uh, English Defense League. Those are those beer drinking, ale um, suckling, um, pretzel, uh, fish and chip goblin. Those are the people that they can count on. The, the great unwashed of England, those who live in council housing um, or some, you know, scheme, uh, they have never worked or infrequently work. And of course, the one thing that bothers them every day is that somebody is going to take their job, even the jobs that they've never had. Yeah, if you need them, they're there for you. They are gladiators and warriors in the classic sense. So whether they're full-fledged diabetics or pre-diabetics, they will put on their compression stockings. <laughs> they will unwrap those CPAPs and they will get out there and they are going to fight for England. You hear me? They are going to fight for England, for king and country, right? For king and country. Or, I mean, let's be real about it. For queen and country, could be, could be a queen. But whatever the case may be, they are going to get out there and they're going to fight the fight. So I wouldn't worry about it, whether the Wellses, Kate and William, whether they sink or swim, there are people there who are going to help them fight their corner. Okay, so Royal Death Shock. Um, ever since that announcement, things have taken a downward spiral. It was already bad enough because Kate was nowhere around. It was already bad enough because of Charles uh, being diagnosed with cancer. And then that happened. And then when that happened, it seems like William just, I don't know, something, something happened to William. We don't know what it was that, that triggered him like that, but then William seemed to, to lose it. And so people were speaking about the bruises and the dark uh, circles around his eyes. And, you know, it did look like somebody gave him a karate chop to the neck as though they were trying to defend themselves. But whatever the case may be, um, you know, and I've even heard, oh, well, you know, William partied with him that weekend. We don't know. I have, I have not seen evidence of that. But whatever the case may be, um, <laughs> here, here, but whatever the case may be, um, it, it seems like it just made a bad situation worse. The guy was in his shed, right, or in his parents' shed or some, um, house that they use on the estate for storage or something. And his father was just talking to him. And then next thing you know, he's not alive anymore. Now, I've heard people mention that there's going to be a coroner inquest. From what I know, and you know, I'm a real Anglophile. From what I know about the UK, it doesn't take much to, to generate an inquest. That's going to happen, you know, regardless They'll come out there in their little white bunny suits and put the tent up and all that kind of stuff, looking for evidence. Um, one of the, I think it's the oldest government office that exists is that of the coroner. Even in ancient times, they had an inquest. And it's a good thing because, you know, in, in a lot of societies around the world, in a lot of countries around the world, um, you know, if they see something like a bottle of pills on the table, they'll just run to an assumption, uh, assumption that is, and they don't look much further. So I'm all for being thorough. Now, 
him having locked himself, you know, and someone told me, they said, well, who locks themselves? Who locks the door behind them if they're planning to do something like that? Um, that's a good question. I didn't know that, you know, that was a thing that people would leave the door unlocked, you know, just so whatever. But, and that is, if that's what happened, we don't know what happened. But this guy was highly successful in the business world. He seemed to be happily married. And from what we hear from her ex, who ended up marrying a man, but what we hear from her ex, the one who said that uh, her mother had two black sheeps named Venus and Serena, he said that he, you know, took substances with her in the Queen's swimming pool at Buckingham Palace, you know, because that pa the swimming pool at Buckingham Palace is available to any family member or any staff member that wants to use it. And if the family uses it, then the staff cannot use it. But there is a swimming pool that is heated, you know, 365 days a year. And so they went skinny dipping in that pool. Not the guy that died recently, but her ex who is married to a man. This girl has had some bad luck when it comes to men. I mean, her ex, uh, after five years of dating, left her or they broke up or whatever. And then this happened. She's a widow. I don't think she has any kids. Um, I don't think so. Um, so she's had some bad luck when it comes to men. Um, what is her name? Lady Eloise Windsor. She's had some bad luck. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't wish Pippa's sloppy seconds on anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Uh, YM Joy says, I believe the rotund gentleman <laughs> in the middle is hiding. Uh, the Lindbergh baby, Amelia Earhart, Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> And Will's shame under his belly. <laughs> Woo! I love it. Thank you, YM Droid. I love it. Yes, there, there's a lot you can you can hide under the under those um those spears. Just like that thing they have in Las Vegas, the spear. There's a lot you can hide under those spheres. I mean, they have their own gravitational pull, don't they? Uh, <laughs> hey, I wonder how many of them went to the market and how many stayed home, huh? <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. I see you guys were having fun with that one, huh? Uh, yeah, because why would you want an educated woman around when you can have uh, people that show you absolute deference all day long? Why would you want someone educated, someone who's sure of themselves? Why would you want them to be around? So, you know, among other reasons for Megan to leave, they really didn't want someone that had any drive or ambition to be around. You know, um, Megan, like say an Eleanor Roosevelt or, you know, a lot of the women that's in politics today, a lot of women that had these uh, not-for-profits and such. And of course, women that run corporations, when you believe in something, and you stick with that, you can do some incredible things. You can do some incredible things. And a lot of men and women find that threatening. That's a threat. And I remember early on, a lot of the Swatties were convinced that Carol Middleton took a good look at Megan and said, oh, she's got to go. Now, we don't know that for sure. This is all alleged, of course. But a lot of people were un of the belief that Carol Middleton, Kate's mother, was, was helping the press. 
when all along that is possible that she was playing her role because if anybody uh, could see a threat coming, that would be Carol Middleton. She did a lot to get her mediocre daughter into that family. And the last thing she would want is for someone to outshine her. So, yeah. But uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Gwen Marie. Appreciate your comment. All right. Uh, let's move on. So this was this comment here on the right side. Uh, this is not someone that we would call a squatty. But in spite of that, I covered up their information because I don't want to drive people into someone's inbox or timeline. So it says there, William and Kate's PR nightmare has reached such a crescendo, they would obviously share something with the public to make it stop if they could, but they can't. The simple fact is they lied. The cover-up is always worse than the original sin. The cover-up is always worse than the original sin. Now, what that sin is, is unclear, but they're covering up something. And we need only start with Charles' announcement about his prostate. There was no reason, no logical reason why Charles had to come out that day and announce his woes of the prostate. There was no logical reason for that. A prostate surgery is not an emergency, okay? He walked into the hospital, he walked out of the hospital. Where was the emergency? Kate's surgery was allegedly a scheduled surgery. We suspect it was something that started on the 28th of December, but we're led to believe that is uh, from the 17th of, of January. Well, whatever the case may be, she has not been seen in public, she has not been photographed or recorded in public for over two months. So somewhere in there is a lie. Somewhere in there is a lie. And if it's not that part of it that's a lie, then it's somewhere between where we are today and whatever happened on the 28th, possibly the 17th of, um, of January. But somewhere they're making up something. And it would be very convenient for Charles to give cover to send a, a rescue line to his not so bright son for something that he may or may not have done to cause this problem. Something happened. And of course, it appears that the two households are at war with each other because no matter what happens, you can barely get the two of them in the same room at the same time in the public. Whether or not they meet behind the scenes is difficult to say. Whether or not they talk on the phone, we still don't know. I mean, they do have those um, satellite phones that are encrypted, or they even have the cell phones that are encrypted where you don't have to worry about people listening in. They could do Zooms or whatever. They have the means to talk across town if they have to. And it wouldn't take much more than a helicopter ride for them to be together. But how much they talk is unclear. It doesn't seem like Charles has ever had a solid relationship with William, that, that he's been ever able to teach William anything. So since the queen, actually since the queen mother died, who's been teaching William anything? I don't know that he was ever that close to the queen. I, I don't know that. I, I don't have any evidence to say that he and the queen were, were that close. When the queen died, Anne was with her. Charles went out to forage for mushrooms, which is the same as not being there. He set up for an interview the day before she died, in spite of how horrible she looked. 
I mean, you anybody could look at the uh, the queen and say, hey, uh, she ain't got much longer. I started working on an obituary because I said, hey, she ain't got much longer. And where was Charles? Setting up for a television interview. That's how close he was to his mother. He's seen death before. He knows what it looks like. Seemed like he would want to be there. So he wasn't that close to his mom, and William is not that close to Charles. Now, Prince William, I want to end homelessness in Britain. That ain't what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Prince William, the solo dad. Where is Kate? Prince William. Oh, too many people have died in Gaza, right? Where's Kate? There's a single cipher because Kate was not important enough to be mentioned. Not we, but I. I, 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 I. No Kate. And still, and still, it took until uh, people started thinking William had done something to Kate. It took until that happened. But before that, every time they showed a picture, it was Kate by herself or it was William with the kids or William by himself. And this wasn't just isolated to one article in one magazine or paper. This is something that went across the board. Here's another. Here's another. Modern dad, Prince William, is very confident looking for, I'm sorry, looking after uh, George, Charlotte, and Louis. Where's Kate? Where's Kate? Prince William won't be phased by having to solo parent his three children, all whilst Princess Kate remains in hospital. Even when she was in the hospital, they didn't think it was necessary to include her in the photo. I don't know why she's not in that photo unless she's the one holding the camera, but it says there, image by Millie Pickering, right? Millie uh, Pickerton, Pickerton. So Kate's not even holding the camera, but for some reason they took a photo without Kate and then they took a photo with Kate. <laughs> when that happened, I wonder if Kate had enough sense to know, gee, that's strange. Why wouldn't he want me in the photo? They didn't want her in that photo. A matter of fact, they didn't want her in this photo either. They just didn't want her. For whatever reason, she was not necessary for whatever the goal was that day. Oh, let me go back here for a second. Why William won't be phased by solo parenting. Prince William is a hands-on dad who won't be phased. It's like they sent out a press briefing, right? And celibacy, of course, Prince William is increasingly happy to go solo. He seems blah, blah, blah. Watch Prince William dad dance on his way into our hearts. Oh, that was back in 2017. Never mind that one. That was when he skipped that engagement to go skiing. Uh, but yeah, so you can see those three at least are selling us on the idea and the bottom one of the single dad. I don't know why that was so important, but that's what they wanted people to envision. That was the narrative that they were selling while Kate was in the hospital, allegedly in the hospital, right? And this is from January of this year, January 2024. Now, it may have come out, I don't know if they actually put the, their papers out in December, but it, the date at the bottom, you see it? January 1st, 2024. Well, they said that then, and then, of course, recently, we've seen evidence of it. Not to say that that's true. Let me caution. We don't know that that's true, but... Um, <clears throat> there's this.
Now I say he this ship is listing by about eight to ten inches. Yeah. Eight to ten inches of sway during the national anthem, God save the king. Now, in the past, he would have stood uh, as straight as a ramrod, erect posture. But here, it seems like you can barely, barely cope. And, of course, he ended up dropping the medal. Couldn't seem to keep a handle on it. Just very interesting that that was what was being said. And you have to also take note of the fact that that is an American publication. That is an American publication. They have no uh, dog in, in that in that hunt. They don't, or as what is it, skin in the game or whatever. So they just they the same way the Inquirer is predicting uh, how long Charles will live. It also took an American paper to say that William seems to be, you know, fortified. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, he's he was trying hard to keep it together. He was doing his best. By the way, please make sure you hit the like button. And then there was this, that day that Kate went out wearing that red outfit, um, the day she was bearing her legs to the world, William was so turned on and so excited at how beautiful his wife looked that day that he literally began to pick at the trim of the interior of one of their Bentleys. He literally started trying to, to take his thumbnail and scrape whatever little barnacle there was on the trim of the car. Yep. That's how excited he was. I mean, he has this beautiful woman right next to him, the mother of his children. And the only thing that he could seem to think of was, is that, is that dirt? Hmm, maybe it's a magic marker. Oh, God, this, this won't do. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Uh, the Leaning Tower of William. I like that. The Leaning Tower of William. Now, uh, Camilla shows Prince Charles who's the boss as she brandishes a knife. With a smile on her face, Camilla, and she was 67 at the time, held up the eight-inch blade and told Charles, Behave yourself. Huh. The only thing that's weird about this is that she's doing it in public. Alone, I would say that's probably a daily event, but I didn't really need to show this today. I was just being that way. I saw it, and I'm just like, I wonder if they ever saw this. <laughs> wow. Can you believe she looked like that at 67? Who looks like that at 67, especially someone with wealth and privilege? Now, I'm not going to be petty and get into somebody's looks. You know, I'm I'm better than that. But um, mm, y'all know what time it is. <laughs> Ready for it? Oh, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Ready for it? It's coming. I'm giving you a fair warning this time. Fair warning. Here we go. And of course, <clears throat> there's this. Um, it wouldn't be Camilla if she didn't eat like a complete savage. Um, nobody can throw away some, uh, should I say, uh, snarf can scarf down some, uh, fish and chips like old Camilla. There you go. 
she's out of place in the tea shop, or should I say in the china shop. Okay, so right here, right here, right here. No one seems concerned about these conspiracy theories, even though they have been going on for years. If the media doesn't care about conspiracy theories, when, you, when they are about women of color, like Meghan Markle, surely they care about conspiracy theories involving children. Trolls like UK Royal Gossip. Oh, I don't even know why I bothered to cover up the name, but yeah, so that's who this person is uh, talking about there, are constantly spreading conspiracy theories about Harry and Meghan's children. So if you look below, this person said, this is what a real baby looks like, moving hands and a body that isn't as flat as a board. Megan and has been deceived the world by presenting a doll instead of newborn. When will they be held accountable? So this is the stuff that they have been saying about the Sussex children for, well, since the birth of Archie and now Lily. You could go into some of those derangers spaces. You can go on some of their channels and they still say that Archie and Lily don't exist. And then there are some people that say, oh, she used a surrogate. And if they're surrogates, they can't be in line for the throne. There's one very prominent channel where they talk about the Sussex children in a way that makes you feel weird in the stomach. You know what I'm saying? It, it makes you feel sad, a little angry, and somewhat afraid all at the same time. But I don't know if these two are the same people and that they changed the name of their account. But the other column here on the right, this person, and I'll let you guys read it. This person gave us a lengthy lecture about why we should not get involved in this conspiracy of what happened to Kate Middleton or what's happened to Thomas Kingston. They are of the opinion that it is beneath, and this is not a squatty, by the way, that it is beneath us to speculate about these things. But according to squatties who know this person, which may be the same person on the left side there, this person had, has never, ever said or done anything to defend the Sussex children. Not just the Sussexes, but their children. And when Megan was heavily pregnant with Archie and living over there in Frogmore and people were abusing and, har and harassing her, not just on the internet, but in the tabloids, in the tabloids. Every day in the tabloids, Megan was being abused, electronically lynched day by day. And I can guarantee you that when uh, Jeremy Clarkson said those terrible things about Megan, I bet you Jeremy Clarkson didn't draw any type of lengthy response about how we shouldn't uh, look into these things, how we shouldn't talk about these things, how we ought to defend people. No, they didn't say anything. None of the derangers or none of these public figures that are insisting that you all are going too far. By the way, uh, most of the worst of these comments are not coming from anybody that we recognize, right? It's coming from people who have just hopped onto the bandwagon and want to talk about it because it is a very mysterious thing that one of the most protected, one of the most privileged people in the world disappears, have been removed from public view without a reasonable explanation. So people are talking about this public figure. Megan was not guaranteed any privacy 
while she was in that country and even away from that country. But everyone is supposed to stop, cease and desist. Do not speak of Kate Middleton. She is entitled to her privacy. Black Queen says they are just mad that Archie and Lily are the best looking royal kids. <laughs> they are of royal blood and there's nothing these scurrying, deranged gutter rats can do to change the fact, uh, change that fact. It boils their blood. Uh, thank you, Black Queen. Um, and, and yes, <clears throat> uh, but I got to say mostly what bothers the press is the no access and what bothers the derangers is the fact that they are not available to abuse the 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 people that hate harry and megan they want to see the kids so that they can abuse them so that they can speculate about whether or not they are special needs children i've heard that about archie or whether or not they're attractive and I remember the, that photo of Lily sitting in the grass. There was even uh, someone who said, she doesn't have any legs. Could you imagine being a mother and you hear those things about your children? And I will just speak up for everyone and say that the Sussex Squad or anybody that supports the Sussexes, we have never ever targeted those children. We have never targeted the Cambridge children. I have never seen anything speculating about those children. I've only heard people say, leave them alone, pray for them. They should be protected. I have never heard anything disparaging about those children, no matter what the parents have been guilty of. It has been hands off the children. But Archie and Lily are not afforded that same courtesy. They're not entitled to be left alone. Instead, we hear that they don't exist. Even though there are some people mentally that may decide that they need to solve this mystery once and for all. And that could be a very scary thing to think about. Even though there are people that crazy out there, I'm not even going to be politically correct. There are people that crazy out there. They still do it. They are, there are still channels. There are still spaces that are devoted to attacking Harry and Meghan's children. There are people in jail that have called Harry a race traitor and wants to remove Archie from this world. But now, because Kate, their standard bearer, has disappeared, they want everyone to just be quiet. Now, take a look on the upper left there. They made the Queen and Philip pose for pics at the lowest point in their lives, a mere uh, days before death. That's what one of the squad said. And that is true. Um, Philip was seen driven away from the hospital. They didn't care what he looked like or anything. They just drove him from the hospital. He looked like some kind of vampire that just woke up. They didn't care. And the queen, barely able to stand. The queen was in such bad shape that we only have still photos and not a video because the queen was barely functional. And yet they decided they had to put it on television. They didn't have to do it, but they sent that around the world. Uh, the queen, what, a day or two before she died? And then, of course, 11-year-old Princess Diana, I'm sorry, 11-year-old, at 11 years old, Princess Diana found Prince William acting like um, shooting at his father, King Charles, and had Prince Harry pretend to be Charles giving a speech while taking pot shots at him. In spare, Harry recalls William making him jump in a car 
drive away while he shot at him. Right? That's William. That's William. I'm just sharing some of the stuff that I've seen today. And then on the right side, something a little more fun, I should say, decidedly fun. Um, all these uh, talks about uh, <laughs> murders, missing people, weird theories mostly, et cetera, are super, oh gosh, what does that say? I got to pull it down so I can see it. Are super morbid and depressing. You all need to seek help if you find this entertaining. Now, that's someone who didn't think that this was fun or funny. But the person who posted it said, breaking, Kate Middleton was spotted out with Prince William and King Charles. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Weekends at Buckingham Palace. So. so that's just some of the stuff that's out there. And then right here, Kaiser from Celebitch, he says, Kate, uh, uh, I'm sorry, they found Kate, search party over. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, Kaiser, uh, well, uh, Celebitchy put out a video today. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, Celebitchy put out one of their videos. So if you get a chance to make sure you go over there and check out Celebitchy. Uh, but yeah, so apparently there's no, and isn't that, that scarf or whatever that red and white thing, isn't that Where's Waldo? Isn't that Where's Waldo or something like that? Anyhow, um, where where are they looking? Where are they taking Kathleen to? <laughs> I'm sorry, is it Kathleen? Okay, I see it. Well, I mean, okay. And you guys, hold on. Let me see. I think I'm running out of water. Oh, I got enough. Okay. Uh, let's leave that alone for a minute. Uh, what slide am I on? What slide am I on? I think I'm on 27. Okay. I still got about 20 to go. But um, you all, I, I saw something today and I wanted to share it with you. I thought it was kind of fun. Do you guys remember when the queen went to a fashion show? Do you remember she went to a fashion show? Uh, queen Elizabeth went to a fashion show and joined Anna Wintour, um, and that's what she wore. Uh, and don't forget, Andre Leon Talley said that Queen Elizabeth was one of the best-dressed women in the world, and I agree. She was always very well put together. And there she is with Anna Wintour. But what you may not know is that the Queen actually participated in that fashion show. Did you guys know that? Because I have proof. I have proof. You see, they didn't show this on television. But if you take a look here, walk, walk, you walk, girl. There she is eating up the runway, honey. There she is eating it up. You see that? We don't really know her. We don't really know her. You all think you know the queen, but you don't. Yeah, that's why she's sitting there laughing with Anna Wintour because Anna didn't know she had that in her either. Good on you, your majesty, good on you. There she is eating it up, honey. Walk, work it, girl. You better work. So yeah, you never really know the queen. But uh, she did have a certain flair and a certain amount of taste. And, and yeah, um, who knew? Who knew? That's why I say y'all be kind of hard on the queen. But, you know, deep inside, she's just a girly girl, just like everybody else of that uh, era. She had her more fashionable side. And even though she was the mother or the grandmother to her country and she didn't like to, you know, 
share that side of herself. There were occasions when just for the fun of it, that she would go out there and she would eat up the runway just, just to pay homage to, to her past. You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. Uh, let me see. Oh, you guys, you guys, listen. Uh, fair warning, it's happened again. You know, do you guys remember Schoolhouse Rock when they say, um, out of the frying pan and into the fire, you tried cutting off the sandbags, but the balloon wouldn't go any higher. You can go up to the mountains or down to the sea. You should always say thank you or at least say please. Conjunction, junction, what's that function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. But yeah, I love that. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Well, take a look here. From bad to worse. Now this was already bad enough. One of those Nana Akua wigs, barely on her head, being pushed up from all angles underneath that cap, right? Well, take a look at this. This is the new Nana wig. Yes, she's got a new wig and it is fierce, honey. It is fierce. Take a look at that wig. Honey, don't tell her nothing. You can't talk to her now because she is looking fierce. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid of her, but she is looking fierce. And she is not having it. Yeah, she's got a new one. She has a new one. Now, I must say, I really like the texture, right? I really like the texture. I think that's very, very um, natural looking. But are we supposed to see the cap? It looks like it's a lace front, but the lace has rolled up. You know, you're supposed to, you know, lay it down. The lace is supposed to lay down. But here it looks like an old stocking rolled up. You know what I'm saying? You ever look at, um, remember that show, Mama's Family? And Mama would sit there um, with that stocking rolled up. Well, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. It looks like one of uh, Mama's stockings uh, rolled up. I, I, I'll share it with you. Let me let me show you. Cause uh... <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it looks like. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a second. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. But that's not how that's supposed to look. You know, I'm not um, some expert on these things, but I don't think that you're supposed to let the lace, the lace front roll up like that. I think the lace front is supposed to kind of lay down on your scalp, right? But see, see how it looks like mama stockings? That's what it looks like. Watch, see? It's just rolled up. So I think somebody needs to tell her, listen, girl, roll up lace fronts is not attractive, okay? And then take a look here. If you thought it looked interesting from that angle, take a look there. Uh, she's got the big silver choker on, and she's got the big Wonder Woman bracelet on. I mean, the outfit is gorgeous. She's wearing a gorgeous outfit, but unfortunately... Uh, she seems to have allowed, um, I, I feel like the wig by itself is not awful, but it's just the way she's wearing it is um, kind of bad. It's kind of bad. Uh, Lisette Zog says, Nana, uh, the epitome of ugliness inside 
out <laughs> just the exact opposite of Princess Megan. Um, yes, Lizette, thank you so much. And yeah, and that's that's the thing, is that before she started on these attacks, I could show you some photos of Nana where you say, she's a nice looking girl. But because of what's festering in her being, she is projecting she, well, she's projecting um, um, Angela Levin. She's, she's, her character has morphed her into Angela Levin. That's what's happening here, is her character. If she would stop, and by the way, thank you again, uh, Lisette, and thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. If she would stop, you ever see how she starts her, her, um, when she's on the GB news, I'm so tired of this. I'm so sick of this. And then she just like curls her lips up real tight. Um, angry is not the look for you. Angry and despair is not, is not your strong suit, right? And then I also have a theory. One of the problems that she's having is that, you know, and, and I don't know if you remember my explanation. See, I told you that was a nice outfit. You know, it's like the, the mountains, what causes earthquakes is when the tectonic plates collide. So there is one plate that rises up. That's where mountains come from. It also creates volcanic activity. And then the other plate slides beneath. And that is what's happening with her hair. It's like a tectonic plate. One plate, <laughs> meaning the wig cap, is being thrust up and forward. And the other plate, which is her scalp, is being suppressed by the weight of that massive mound of hair and it is slowly pushing down on her head. And that's why she looks so angry. That's, uh, that's why she looks so menacing is because those tectonic plates are colliding. So again, um, one plate slides under and the other plate is thrust up. And you can see that um, plume, that's the volcanic activity. It also causes, and, and see, the earthquake is like a headache. But for Nana, it is, you know, the real, the real headache. So she's in a lot of pain right now, and she just doesn't know how to ask for help. But she's in pain. That wig is, is causing her to suffer because uh, virtually it is a tectonic plate colliding with another tectonic plate and thus in lies the problem. So I'm convinced that if we can just get her out of those wigs, that her appearance will become light and airy. Um, her, her demeanor will become kinder and gentler. And, and you know, people can go back to liking her again. But until she does that, then she's going to <laughs> then she's going to seem rather rather frightful, right? So I'm just trying to help her. There is a uh, what do you call it? A geological explanation for Nana's uh, you know demeanor. There is a geological explanation. If we can just get a, a geologist to explain this to her, maybe she can seek some help. But until that happens, um, I'm afraid that the world is going to have to suffer the daily abuse of Megan by Nana Akua and her endless supply of tectonic plate cap wigs. 
So I hope I explained that well, because I'm just trying to help. And where I'm not, of course, a, an authority on matters of geology or wigology, um, I think the principles are the same. If you can rid yourself of that uh, compression by that tectonic plate, or in her case, the wig cap, then you could ease the, the burden of pain and suffering. And thus, Nana Akua can go back to being a human being and, and a, a credit to her race. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's, that's my instructions. That is my theory. And um, if somebody wouldn't mind explaining that to her, um, and then as for the other person on the panel who has done everything she could to turn the clock back, <laughs> and by the way, um, it is important that you change out those hair extensions from time to time, um, whatever that rattiness that she's got on her head is pretty bad too. So, okay. And this is why GB News is such a unique place because no matter how scary your hair is, they have a place for you on television. Okay. So, um, GB News backlash is Nana Akua branded vile for attacks on Harry and Meghan. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were torn apart by GB News host Nana Akua, but her scathing monologue about the couple did not sit well with viewers. And that was back in March of 2023. And here it is a year later, and still she is just as vicious as ever. And she said at the time that she is tired of talking about that couple. But see, my theory is around that time, she started wearing these big, heavy, bulky wigs, pressing down on her scalp like a tectonic plate. And, and ever since that time, she has just gotten meaner and meaner and meaner and, 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 and cruel. So, and then over here, there's also been said that they have been blackfishing, meaning that someone has been writing these columns and allegedly Nana is the face of those articles, but she hasn't actually written them. But yeah, she is super, super conservative by all appearances. And anything that helps someone poor, a person of color, anyone who has been a victim, she speaks out against it, which is ironic because there's not one time that I've ever um, looked at Nana Akua and didn't see victim. I mean, here this woman wants to be on television. She wants to be famous, but it seems like the only way that that's possible is she has to go out there with those gigantic wigs on, always tighter and bulkier, and God knows she's probably hot, but um, either way, those massive uh, monstrosities on her head. I mean, if she doesn't wear those, they probably won't let her on television, to be honest with you. They probably have no use for her. I mean, you got to, you got to play the game if you want to make it on television. But yeah, I think deep down inside, she's probably a very nice person. But because of the, you know, expectations from GBN, she has to go out there, you know, and, and play the game. So, oh, thrive with the, uh, thrive, thrive with the Sussexes. Let me see here. I did her wig and makeup like that on purpose. <laughs> just kidding. I just wanted to show some uh, love before I go to sleep. So happy to catch a live. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for being here. And thank you for also having a Sussex friendly space. We can use more of those. Thank you so much. And B. Martim says, 
somebody tell her to stop buying wigs from the corner store. <laughs> That's Timo. That's Timo. If Timo had a corner store, that's where she got it from. She got it from the Timo of corner stores. Thank you, B. Martin. But you know, sometimes you run out, you need some eggs, a pack of squares, uh, perhaps you need some scratch offs. And so during those times when you find yourself in need of some scratch offs, some eggs, a pack of new ports, you grab a wig. Who hasn't done that? Who hasn't done that? You go to get some uh, a carton of milk, uh, perhaps some um, chips or something like that. And while you're there, you just say, "How much is it? Hey, how much? Uh, yeah, oi! How much is that wig back there?" You know, in her very husky voice. And they say, "Oh, that? Oh, that's a pound ninety-five. I'll take it." Really? I'll take it. We haven't been able to sell that thing for five years. What part of I'll take it? To <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, she'll take it. Somebody's got to do it. All right. So, um, oh, by the way, you guys. Please, 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 please. Let me let me see if I can find the link. Uh, I shared this on the community tab. Now, she only makes a video ever so often. I think since the coronation, uh, Duchess Royal has only made, oh, I think three or four videos, but they are spectacular. I mean, the production that she puts into these are incredible. And I'm very jealous with you all because I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. But as soon as I'm done, that's what I want to do is watch uh, Duchess Royal. Um, but yeah, she makes some great videos. You could go back and look at her videos at any time uh, because they're timeless works. Okay, they're just timeless. So um, do make sure uh, you go and support her channel because that's the only way we're going to get her to make more of these videos, but they are spectacular. I tell you, I, I'm, I, these are like the only ones that I watch more than once. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. They're so good. I actually watch them more than once. Like, you know, when you're looking for something to, to do or something to watch, I'll go back and watch it again. Okay. I'll go back and watch it again. So let me um, let me find that link, and uh, I will share it with you at the top of the chat. But um, yeah, she don't do a whole lot of them, so we have to do what we need to do to encourage her to make some more. Okay, so let me put that there. Okay, and now I'm going to put that at the top of the chat. But uh, yeah, they, they are really, really good. Uh, you know, and this, you can tell, you can tell that her videos are days of work. It's not just, you know, that day overnight or something like that. This is days of work to put these together. If you guys knew what it take, took to edit a video, you understand what I'm saying? It takes days to do that. So, yeah, she put a lot into it. Okay, so remember, it's Duchess Royal. Make sure you get over there and subscribe to that channel and support that channel because um, she is definitely doing the Lord's work. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. So right here it says the hate for one man and his family brought them all together. Now that they failed in bringing him down, I wonder what will keep them together. You know, and that is something that is something that you have to remember in life is that 
I mean, I'm sure you've seen this before when everybody's hating on one person and then they don't have that person to hate on anymore. And then next thing you know, what happens? They turn on each other. And that seems to be what's happening with the press right now is that um, they seem to have been turning on each other. So um, here you have the fly, wait, no, the bee, the fly, and the wasp. That Those are the ones at the bottom there. And then, of course, there is Will and Kate and Jason Knopf, uh, but there's other people. These are just a handful of people. But presenting the flop on flop violent group. And what they have done, I would, I would say, has been quite menacing. Violent and maybe too strong of a word, but until there's a better word to use in this place, I'm going to agree with that because, um, you know, I, I hate to say it, but we do have to say it. Uh, no matter what Will and Kate are going through, whatever Charles and Camilla may be going through, whatever anybody in that family is going through, the Sussexes have lost an unborn child. Okay. And I, I say, I believe, and I'm always going to be, believe that it is because of the endless harassment that she received, not only from that family, not only from her family, but also from the tabloid media. They have paid a very, very hefty price for loving each other, right? They lost the child because they fell in love with each other. And I'm always going to believe that. And I find that the tabloid media, the courtiers, as well as select family members, I find them responsible for that. And so it, it is, like I said, I'm not in the mood to be so generous to have sympathy for any of them because they're cruel people. They're very cruel. Uh, Lisette Zog says, this is what I love of Baron, the most always promoting other Sussex Squad friendly channels. Well, thank you so much, Lisette. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just glad that the community is growing. And I'm, you know, and what really is beneficial is that when there are those big stories, there's an alternative voice that is more easily found if you have more voices. There's alternatives to the narrative from um, Kensington Palace and Clarence House and the various news outlets. There's alternatives. That's why. Uh, Daily Mail and the others are trying to get on TikTok because they can't control that turf. They have taken over, uh, you know, other spaces, but they have no control there. So, uh, but thank you again for being a member and for the uh, super chat. Okay, let me move on here. I still got a bunch of slides to get to. So this is what I was talking about. Royal Rage. Megan, you don't get to claim privacy after you star, I'm sorry, after your star studded baby shower and wedding that we forked out 30 million pounds for, being a royal isn't a part time job. That's from The Sun, the Rupert Murdoch paper. This is while Megan was heavily pregnant with Archie. She was being brutally harassed by the tabloid media. And then just to make sure that the world was able to see their victory lap, world exclusive from the paper that brought you Megxit, Frogzit, King Chuck, Harry and Megan out of Frogmore and offers it to Andrew. You see what I'm saying? They celebrate their treachery. They celebrate the fact that they have been able to viciously harass them again and again and again to the point where Megan was caring for Archie 
And if you know the story, you know what she was feeling and what she went through. And they don't care. They would do it all over again if they could. But that was a very, very dark period for the Sussexes when they were in that house. And every day, not only did they have to suffer through these humiliating um, tabloids, her mother, her friends, her family that, you know, cared for her family, and her friends that are family, they had to suffer through that abuse. And I say again, whatever Kate is going through, she deserves her privacy. But at the most vulnerable time in a woman's life, pregnancy, Megan, who would be considered a geriatric pregnancy, meaning that she was at greater risk, did not deserve privacy. So when you see these lectures, about what we should and should not say, where we should and should not go, what we should and should not do, what we should and should not feel. Remember this, remember how Megan was treated because at the core, at the root of everything is how vicious they were to someone who showed up prepared to work, someone who used their own money to dress herself, was not relying on any excuses. Megan said, I wasn't expecting it to be easy, but I was at least expecting it to be fair. And it wasn't fair. And there's no excuse about, oh, Oh, well, they, they, they went through it. Yeah, but that's not the point. Why does anybody have to go through it? As Dr. Maya Angelou would say, when you know better, you do better. And now that we know better, why are we still doing it? But they are, and they won't stop. And even 5,000 miles away, they continue the abuse. When the queen died, they were abused. Repeatedly, for days, they were abused. And in spite of that, Megan, she didn't take off for personal reasons. She went outside with her husband. Megan could have stayed in the cottage, you know, for personal reasons. You know how people decide they won't do something for personal reasons? Megan could have stayed in Frogmore for personal reasons. You know, like, I know that there's people outside there that hate me because of the lies that have been told about me, but she didn't. She went out there and she faced those people. She even had to face her sister-in-law that had been so vicious toward her. She faced her too. She faced everything that her husband faced. But we got to protect Kate's privacy because she deserves her privacy. Bombshell claims from Omen Scobie's new book, Call Harry That Fool over Netflix, Caution, Cautious in uh, Conversation with Harry, has his shoelace iron, told royals not to trust Harry. These, of course, are the words of the tabloid, not Omen Scobie. They just took things and made of it what they will. Told Charles there are two royal races. Does not want to return to England. And uh, personally phoned Scobie after death threats. 
you know, that is, that's true. I, I believe that is true. Uh, does not want to return to England. She does want to come back to England. She just doesn't want to be hounded or threatened or chased, you know, down the street. But she wants to return. She had already been back. Persuaded King to evict Sussexes from Frogmore. That one doesn't make sense to me. There's enough courtiers to, to do that nonsense. I don't believe that Princess Anne would care one way or the other. What would be the point of it? I don't think Anne cares about that. That never made sense to me. Uh, doesn't care if he doesn't get an apology. Well, at this point, I, I would say, you know, Harry still wants the apology, but he's not going to be stifled or he's not going to be frozen until that point. Uh, kept in dark about Queen's death. True. Terrified of doing anything uh, than grinning. Well, true. Uh, hasn't spoken to Megan in four years. I suppose that's true. Uh, no going back for relationship with Harry. True. Harry brainwashed by army of therapists. Well, that's what William believes. So untrue. Uh, kept Scobie away from royal engagements. That is true. He didn't like uh, Omen. Uh, thank Piers Morgan for defending the firm. Well, obviously. So those are just some things that they were able to get from Spare. And they put it, I mean, not Spare, but in game. And they that's what they ran in the papers. Now, over here, you can see report included the 2.4 million pound payment from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to reimburse the sovereign grant uh, for expenditures incurred on the reimbursement of Frogmore Cottage, most of which was recognized as income in the in the year. So the sovereign grant, the royal households, they take in a lot of money, which ends up part of the sovereign grant, but they take in a lot of money. Harry and Meghan paid for the refurbishment of Frogmore, which was scheduled to be refurbished, right? They paid for it, even though they don't own that property. Plus, this is the big plus, they also paid for things that were not part of the refurbishment. Like, for instance, the famous carpet bathtub that they wrote about. And mind you, there were several articles a day about Megan, even though she had only been seen publicly a few times within, what was it, four or five months? But on the daily, they badgered the Sussexes while living in Frogmore. The things that they added to that house, if there was a certain type of flooring, if there were whatever the extra amenities were, a stainless steel refrigerator, Harry and Megan paid for that themselves. I could assure you that that refrigerator, that bathtub, or the new kitchen is still at Frogmore. They did not take that with them. But not only did they pay the hundreds of thousands of dollars for the things that they wanted, they paid for the renovation, which they were not obliged to pay. They had no obligation to pay for that renovation. But Harry, wanting to move on and to stop the comments like the one you see on the left side, went ahead and paid the money anyway. He didn't have to. He offered to do it. Along with offering to give back the titles, he also offered to pay. The titles, they wouldn't take the money they took. Imagine that. We'll want the titles, but how much you say you're going to give us? We'll take it. Megan and Harry's new family home. Oh, God. Luxury 2.5 million a uh, pound cottage is con is converted barn. They were renting this space 
so that they would have a weekend retreat. The queen didn't give them a weekend retreat. Retreat. I'm sure they didn't ask for one. But using their money, they rented a property in the country surrounded by other properties. So there was no public right of way for anyone to get to that house. But what did the tabloids do? I think they flew a helicopter over and using long range lenses were able to film the interior of the house just to make sure that Harry and Megan did not have a safe space, that they had no place to retreat, not even on the weekends. And that's when they were working members of the royal family. They were not safe. Uh, look around your house right now and tell me what it would feel like to see your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen in a tabloid newspaper tomorrow. And if you're pregnant, think about that too that the place that you're bringing the child to is suddenly plastered all over the media. But remember, Kate is entitled to her privacy. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle plugged a 3.4 million hole um, uh, in the royal family finances last summer. Well, this is that money that Harry paid. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were given uh, Frogmore Cottage by Queen Elizabeth II in 2019 as the property where they would build their family. The building in Windsor, which is on the, which is on England's registered Register of Protected Historic Structures, uh, housed five apartments for royal staff and needed renovation. The work was funded in part by the British public money given to the monarch, known as the Sovereign Grant, which is why I said Harry was not obligated to pay that money back. But in order to move on, they chose to do that. Some gift, huh? They could have moved next door. Fury as it emerges, Harry and Meghan spent 2.4 million of your cash on Frogmore Cottage to escape rift with Kate and William, and final bill could hit three million pounds. Once again, I'm going to say this: while Meghan is pregnant with child, while Harry is confused because the family who promised that they would help is hurting them, including his brother, first and foremost, his brother. Suddenly, because of the leaks from Kensington Palace, you have articles like this popping up. Newlyweds move out of Kensington Palace amid reports of a rift with William. Couple offered larger apartment next door. Harry's uh, to Harry's brother, uh, but went to Windsor. Well, why would someone do that if you could just save money and stay there? Is it because of the menacing, egotistical tyrant of a brother who is trying to destroy you? Probably. Remember, William took pleasure in everyone saying that he made them leave Kensington Palace. But instead of running that story, they decided that they would make life miserable for the Sussexes by making them looking greedy and selfish by taking the taxpayers' money to move into Frogmore. They left because they had to. They didn't want to. But work included landscaping and painting ongoing, so cost could is expected to rise. Remember, it was already scheduled for renovation. 
Harry and Meghan team previously claimed project would only cost 1.5 million pounds. Anti-monarchist Republic wants a preliminary uh, inquiry into royal spending. Now, Republic, Republic, they used to go after Harry and Meghan. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the Sussex squad, um, they probably wouldn't have stopped. But once things were explained to them, then they left them alone. Because Republic was making Harry and Meghan out to be the villains because the tabloids were making them out to be the villains. And since anything that looks like a waste of public money is fair game to Republic, you know, not my king Republic, they even went after Harry and Meghan. Oh, I already shared that. I can skip past this. Now, um, this article is from uh, uh, Huffington Post. And wait, you ain't heard the best part of it. It was written by a black woman. I repeat, it was written by a black woman. The Kate Middleton conspiracy theories need to stop. Really? I wonder if the person who said that is privileged to all of this information. Huh? Is that person privileged to all of this information? The one who says we need to stop talking about Kate? Wonder if she if she's privileged to that. Or is this another one of those black fishing exercises? How much sense does that make? How much sense does that make? Like I just said, all of this was happening when Megan was expecting her first child. Daily, relentless attacks. And it got so bad, it got so bad that they even had a letter in Parliament pointing out how unfair it was. Did not matter a bit. They continue endlessly attacking her for just being alive. That's it and that's all. But I, I, I'm not even going to share the article with you. I didn't look at the article. Um, I heard about it. And I said, if that's what it's about, I take your word for it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. But there's only one logical response that I could think of to the person who wrote this article, if indeed it's as repugnant as it seems. And there's nobody else better to say it. Hey girl, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. Stop. There you go. Sit down. Hey, girl, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> That's what I have to say to the person who wrote an article saying to stop talking about Kate Middleton. Sit down. Do take a seat. Oh, do please take a seat. How many homes do they need? How many homes can a slim down royal justify at a time of exploding cost of living crisis affecting working families up and down the country having three royal residents looks clumsy, clumsily that is insensitive, writes Richard K. You know, Richard K is rare, but sometimes he can get it right. How many homes do they need? This is when they decided they wanted Adelaide Cottage, right? Uh, while everything I just said to you, and really this is for the benefit of people who don't know, but for everything I just said to you, I want you to remember that they have the largest apartment 
at Kensington Palace. I think it's like 22 rooms or something. Anmer Hall near Sandringham. That's where a family was evicted by the queen so that her grandson could take it. They didn't want to move, but they had to. And then, of course, they have some place up in Scotland that they've never shown. And, of course, Adelaide Cottage. So it's not really three homes. They have four. And I promise you, I believe with all my heart that Kate was living at Adelaide Cottage. William was living at Windsor Castle, five minutes away. Easy to, for those school runs. Right? Picture the moment Kate boarded a helicopter flight that cost the taxpayers 3,000 pounds while the queen made the same trip by train. I'm surprised that they even put that in print. And Phil Dampier says, I'm a fan of Will and Kate, and it's a good to, I'm sorry, and it's good they will be living in modest Adelaide Cottage and the kids schooling together but they are keeping Kensington Palace apartment and Anmer Hall. Do they really need three homes? You know, they can rent uh, any of these places to the public. You guys do know that, don't you? Any of these places can be rented to the public. You can rent those places. That's how they got um, the Anmer Hall. There was someone, not a family member, renting that place. Will and Kate had them kicked out. And you can see a picture of Balmoral Castle. That's because, and you can see Richard Palmer says, and the holiday cottage on the Balmoral estate, Phil, four homes. See what I mean? Four homes. All the hounding that they did with Harry and Meghan and yet William had four homes by the time um, they ran this article. Four. Yeah, there, there they are. Oh, is that the place in Scotland? Oh, that must be the, co the Scotland cottage. I've never actually seen it. So that's Scotland at the upper left, Adelaide to the right, bottom right, Anmer Hall, Norfolk. And then, of course, the Kensington Palace, the largest apartment that they have there. Yeah, it looks like a little castle. It does look like a little castle. Uh, they live in large. They live in large for two people who have never worked for anything in their lives. They are a utter waste of time. And so in closing, you guys, and I am done at this point, let me just say, you know how they say, Art uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, there is more to that that's always missed. Imitation is the sincere, sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness, right? So that means that someone who is very mediocre, right? someone who is very mediocre, mediocre that is, if they want to pay a compliment to someone who is accomplished, then imitate them. But either way, the ones that's doing the imitating probably always has and always will be less than. Got that? They always have been and they always will be lesser than Harry and Megan. So with that, you guys, I am done. Thank you so much for staying. Oh my God, three hours? Are you crapping me? Exactly three hours. I said two, it turned into three. Good Lord, what happened? What happened? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Joe List. Oh, man, I did not realize it had been that long. No wonder I lost my voice. 
Okay. I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to look at most of your comments. I'm pretty sure there was some good stuff here, and I missed most of it. Let me see. Good night, Anastasia. Uh, British TV just said, we own her womb. Good God, who said that? Hmm. Uh, yeah, they do sound like uh, the MAGA people. They do. They really do. And it, and sometimes when I look at the threads and the timelines of some of those derangers, the comments are straight out of the uh, MAGA playbook. They're straight out of the MAGA playbook. Thrive with Strive. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Yet another Sussex friendly space, you all. Oh, here, let me put that up there. Yet another Sussex friendly space. Let me see. Oh, give me a second here. Okay, and I'm all dehydrated. I got to drink some water. Okay. Uh, all right, I don't see it. Let me try it again. Uh, okay, Black Queen, I'm looking for it. That was you that shared it, right? I'm looking for it. Wait a minute. Okay, see if you can add it again because I hadn't been on that channel. I mean, on the other screen, and I have to do that on the other screen. So if you could share it again, I'll put it up. Oh, Lit for Sussex says, uh, good night, everyone. Rest well, and or good morning. Sussex prayer time, right? Thank you. All right. I did not realize it had been uh, anywhere close to three hours, let alone three hours. Good Lord, where did the time go? Okay. Good night, Lorna Williams. Good night, uh, uh, Plally. Plally, am I saying it right? Uh, good night, cookies and cream. Yes, everyone, please continue to pray for the Sussexes, each other, and the world. Uh, speaking of which, let me do my last word of the day. Uh, and this, this, believe it or not, I'm going to see if I can try to help uh, those misguided fools over in Narnia. The cover-up is worse than the crime. These minutes into my commute, oh, I'm sorry, not these, three. Three minutes into my commute and I face a decision. Should I continue to go home? If I continue on, I would endure stares from my coworkers. I'd feel myself conscious, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'd feel my, ugh, I would feel self-conscious all day long. I turned the car around and went back home. I knew I'd missed my first meeting. So be it. What happened? I spilled coffee on my light gray pants. A giant coffee stain on my pants would have prompted stares and eye rolling from my peers. Jokes flourished behind my back. Did Barry pee on himself? Would they call me into HR for a reprimand? Maybe even fire me. Then what? The job market is soft. How would I feel my, I'm sorry, how would I feed my family? I should probably quit, right? <laughs> I lost my throat. 
Anyway, the punishment and everything else I just said, okay, I better go because I am losing my voice and I can't see straight. <laughs> I'll share that. I'll tell you what, I'll put that in the community tab. It was interesting. Um, uh, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Black Queen, did you put the link up again? Because I didn't catch it the first time, and I looked for it. Anyway, that's okay. I'll do it. It was Thrive. No. Wait, who was it? Who was that? Let me see. It was Thrive with Strive, right? Okay, so I see it here, right? Let me see if I can. No, I can't do it like that. Oh, that doesn't. Well, anyway, it's on the thing right there, you guys. That is another Sussex friendly space. But for some reason, I'm not able to do it on the other screen. Oh, well, that's not working. Okay, love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, that I will see you all tomorrow. And remember, whenever you see our queens, it's pretty much time to go. You know what I mean? So there's our queens. There's our queen in heaven. There is the rock of the um, Sussex family. And, of course, there's even black queen. Whenever you see them queens, do you know it's time to go? So I will see you all tomorrow. I am a bit dehydrated. Uh, yes, good night, Lady Bird. Good night. And remember, y'all, stop uh, feeding into these conspiracies and everything because we know it's all true. <laughs> it's not a conspiracy. It's all true. I believe every word of it. Uh, Deborah Anderson, thank you so much for the last super sticker of the day. Thank you. And thank you, Lisette, B. Martim, Thrive with the Sussexes, uh, Lisette, uh, YM Droid, Sussex Love, Joan Garcia, B. Martim, Lee C. D. Legs, Joan Garcia, Legs, uh, Sharon Lambert, new member, Legs, and Carol Lund, two years membership. I can't believe three hours went by. I certainly cannot believe two years of a membership. That is extraordinary. All right. Um, and let us end with the Ginger Avenger. Okay, finally got it. Thank you so much, uh, Black Queen. Um, 
Did I do it? Is it up there? Because I don't see it. I know I just did it. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's up there. You know, I had to go back to the YouTube screen to do that. And sometimes if I don't take that screen away from, you know, the same window, then it doesn't move. So when I'm not using it, it doesn't do anything. So you have to forward it back to wherever you are on the other screens. It's, it's weird, but it's uh, always kind of iffy like that. Okay, so there we go. Good night, everyone. Again, at the top of the chat is another Sussex friendly space. Uh, do make sure you like, subscribe, and as always, share. We have grown quite a community, and you, you should all be very proud of that. Also, you all have been so generous with the various charities and the foundations and all of that other stuff. So I think, what is it, Sussex Rod has raised, has it, was it a million or two million? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we raised over a million dollars since the Sussex Squad has been around. Over a million dollars has been raised in the Sussex's name, inspired by the Sussex's, however you want to put it. The Sussex Squad has been a very, very generous community and has raised a lot of money. And it all started because they were complaining about, uh, what was it, the... Um, Harry taking a private jet, and uh, was it Tina and Michelle that started that? They raised money to plant a forest in Archie's name. That's how I remember it. And from there, um, the Sussex Squad has raised over a million dollars. See what happens when you push us too hard? We just do great things. That's what happens when you push us. Yeah, we do great things. Okay, I will see you all tomorrow and good night.